Kelly from Clear Center. I'm here with David Loper, and today we're going to talk about compliance in ClearOS. Specifically, let's talk about what compliance features are available in ClearOS, what you can do to make your system meet certain compliance standards, and finally, how do you get support if your system is reported as out of compliance? Take it away, David. Thanks, Colin. So with ClearOS, everything is based in a uh, mechanism that allows for what's called role-based access in uh, the industry. And we do this so that we can comport ourselves with a lot of uh, compliance standards, including things like HIPAA, PCI, Sarbanes-Oxley, and others, other international standards as well for compliance. This is just the best way to do things, where you have resources that are assigned to specific groups as opposed to resources that are assigned to different users. Or the, you know, the worst thing that you can do is have a, a resource that's globally known and the access is global. Uh, globally accessible. For example, if I have a wireless uh, access point and I'm doing a pre-shared key that I share with everybody in the office, that wouldn't comport itself with many compliance directives because now you have a situation where if somebody leaves the company, they're taking with them a specific type of access that you'd have to go and you know change the password for everybody in order to come into a compliance uh, standard. So everybody has their own uh, account in the compliance uh, uh, in, in compliance centric uh, deployments of IT, and every account is part of a group that is has access to specific resources. So that's very much done here in ClearOS. You can set up specific groups of users. And when you go into individual user accounts, what you end up seeing is that you have um, groups that are assigned to those users. But ClearOS, we take it even further. So when you look at these different services that are called app policies, these are actually groups. And in ClearOS, these different services are only allowing access to people that are a member of these special built-in groups. We call these plugins. So these app policies basically define what you can and cannot access um, on the system. And because it's done this way, when you disable a particular user, you don't disable the resource. And when you disable a resource, you end up disabling it for all users that can use that resource. So it's a, a, a very good way to do that. Now, within ClearOS, we set up this uh, group called administrators. Now, when you're the root user and you're setting up your box for the first time and you're trying to get it to be very, uh, to comport itself with compliance standards, what you'll want to do is you'll want to come in here and create policies where you can say, all right, these individual users um, are part of this group and the, this group can do these different things within um, within the web config and you'll want to come in here and say for example if I want to add this group to be able to to define what the multi WAN settings are I would go in and and check those boxes right and that allows me to update the policy and now I've got specific um, access for those those users by way of giving access to that group so we can add specific policies for administration that allow us to do this role-based um, access. Now, there are other aspects to uh, compliance that are important when we talk about having um, different types of uh, systems comply with open standards, and, uh, with, with open standards and with industry accepted practices. So one of those things is that you may have uh, some compliance testing that you're undergoing. And out of that uh, compliance testing, they may say, oh, well, we're going to test your servers and we're going to test your ClearOS server to see if it comports itself with specific compliance type uh, directives. So we maintain a copy of uh, a CVE database and this database is driven by complaints that we've received against ClearOS where a, a penetration testing uh, company has said, oh well we see that there's a problem here, you don't comply with this specific CVE. Most of our CVE um, issues are resolved through upstream mechanisms and so there isn't um, a lot that we have to do to make sure that ClearOS is up to date and that is following best practices but 
just because that happens doesn't necessarily mean that the penetration testing company is able to detect that. They don't know about ClearOS and they don't know about how certain things uh, occur. So sometimes they will say, oh, well, we, we detect you're running this particular version. And so because of that, you need, you've fallen out of compliance. Well, we back port fixes into our specific packages, and so sometimes there isn't a, a, an issue that it really exists, even though the penetration test says that there is. So this CVE database uh, URL, and, um, and we're going to listing it here. This CVE database will allow you to go in and say, "Oh, that's one of the things that they said was a problem." And you can use this to create your responses to this, um, this specific thing. So this, for example, uh, we had a support issue come in where somebody said, this is the penetration testing results I got. And they said that I'm not compliant with this particular um, issue. So this is where they're talking about you know, an attack with cross-site scripting. You, and for, for whatever reason, the system that the penetration testing uh, company was using thought that there might be a Sun application Java server um, running on ClearOS. So that's not an application that we have in the marketplace, and so ClearOS doesn't have this, and we're not uh, vulnerable to this attack by uh, by default you know if you went ahead and found some way to cobble that in of course you'd know about it but ClearOS by default doesn't have this system so we create these responses so that you know how to uh, to respond to these certain types of things um, we've we've worked with uh, security metrics that's a third-party company uh, for example we have some non CVE type responses that come from them for example and um, and what we've done is we've gone and added those types of uh, responses to our database. For example, here's uh, one that they say open uh, SSH 4.3 is vulnerable. So this is something that uh, we backport the fix in for SSH. So even though it, our SSH version for this particular, I think this is ClearOS 6, even though this particular version shows up, um, we've backported fixes in there. We don't change the version number just because we've um, put fixes in that fix uh, specific things. So um, with this, the, the, the short response is that we have backported fixes for SSH uh, 4.3 that resolves this issue. And then we have a long response. And if you want to take some specific action, we say, OK, well, this is what you got to do to make sure that you are actually in compliance with this particular report from security metrics. Make sure you run a YUM update. And if you are up to date, then you're good to go. So um, this is how you can take a penetration test that's done for compliance and uh, make it work for you. Now, say for instance you get a, a pen test um, and it's got responses that are not on this database here of specific issues. Well, all you need to do is, uh, you know, for, for business and uh, customers, we support this in the community. If you have community or home, you want to report this to the com to the community forums. But if you have a penetration test uh, that is done and you need support right away and you need us to help you formulate your answers, that is something that we do as a part of your support subscription. It takes a lot of time on our side to do that, but once we do that, we have it done for everybody. So if you find a report doesn't have something that is reported by the CVE, we will actually help you craft the support. So you'll just log into your portal, you'll go to your account, and you'll create a ClearCare ticket. And in your ticket, you will just identify the system that you have. Um, this would be for a business version. You would specify your subscription. Um, I don't have one on this particular account, but you would put in the subject, you know, penetration test results, and then give us a copy of those uh, of the the penetration test results that you've gotten, and we'll help you uh, respond to your uh, pen test. And if there are entries that are missing from our CVE database, then we will help you to. Uh, uh, to, to know where we're at on those specific issues, and we'll add those to the database. Well, thank you, David. Today we talked about compliance in ClearOS. We covered what compliance features are available in ClearOS, talked about what you can do to make your system meet certain compliance standards, 
And finally, what support is available to you if your system is reported as out of compliance? Thanks, David. Thank you.